vehicles that we can use in order to grow the property market um, with South Africans, you know, who are who are looking to do the same thing, which is build the nation. So let's talk about how you guys operate in terms of do financial institutions and banks and other um, institutions that are financial uh, portfolio managers and all of those, do they recognize Stockfells and are they able to give you guys services that are uh, for your unique needs and uh, specifically to allow you guys to do what you need to do? Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it is a weekday, so that means you see me on your screens talking everything and anything property. If you are joining us for the first time, this is the podcast where we talk about investing, buying, selling, and maximizing your overall private, uh, your property portfolio. So if you are joining us for the first time, thank you so much. And if you're joining us on the Twitter spaces, a special shout out to you. Tonight, I have an interesting topic for us to talk about because it's something that for some of us grew up with but has evolved over the years to become something that is in the property space and that is making people money so if you are a property investor or looking to enter the property market maybe this might be the thing for you i have as usual a guest who is going to give us insights and give us tips and tricks on how we can do this effectively we are talking how to build a profitable property stock file. And I am sitting with Slindile Lisenyani, who is a property investor as well as co a coach in the Sakisizwe property stock file. Slindile, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening to me. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really looking forward to having this discussion because, you know, I grew up in one of those places where every street has a stock fell. <laughs> but it wasn't specifically for, for properties. So today, uh, I, wanna, I want us to talk about what is a property stock fell? How does it look? How does it operate? And who can be a part of it? And I know that's a couple of questions <laughs> in one. But um, let's just hit it and, and start talking about what it is and, and how does it operate. Okay, so um, as we all know, having grown up in our communities, we all knew what stockfalls were as a concept, right? But each of them are unique in that they're characterized by the members themselves, what it is that they intend to achieve from participating in the stockfall. So really, there are no two stockfalls that are exactly alike. I know that we sort of use the umbrella term of property stockfall, but, you know, being in the space, I've realized that each of them are, are, are unique. They are different because the members that join and the objectives for joining the stockfall are different. So some people participate in a property stock firm merely for the fact of, you know, having that level of accountability of um, raising money together. And then that money is then used to put down a deposit towards acquiring a home. If you're a first time home buyer, that provides that level of um, commitment and consistency with savings to achieve that goal. You may find another stock firm, for example, where they buy each other building materials and that way they then buy a, a, a material in bulk and then they're able to build and they even help each other with labor and all of that and then <clears throat> you also then find you know investment focused stock files who say you know what we don't want to buy properties that we are going to live in we want to actually accumulate properties for the fact of placing tenants in for an income so no stock files are exactly the same they are all different the space that i uh, I, I primarily um, um play in is the investment stock file so which are different in that we are not acquiring a property for the purposes of residing in them we are merely investing and acquiring properties for profit or for income purposes Sure. Um, thank you so much. So tell us a bit about Saki Sizwe and, and the property stock file that you guys have set up. Um, you have already mentioned that it's, it's for investing. Tell me how you guys started and what was the, what was the motivation behind it? Um, we spoke a little bit off air and you, you, let, you, you told me that you, you guys have almost 300 people who are part of the stock file. So that's a lot. How do you guys manage it? And, um, you know, going through the day to day, is, isn't it a lot to manage? Isn't it like a full time job? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the stock fell started, you know, with an idea that I, with the frustration that I had had, you know, I, I'm a property investor in my own right, and I had started investing in property, and I realized that I couldn't access certain opportunities because they required, uh, you know, more capital that I couldn't access on my own. And so having grown up in a community, in a family where stock falls were, were the norm and they were common, mm. and they were used for various reasons. 
So for me, it really was a no-brainer in terms of combining the best of both worlds because I had already been playing in the property space. I already saw the benefits. And I mean, I mean I'm mean, i obviously preaching to the choir due to the audience that's on this podcast, but it, we, we all know the benefits of investing in property or even mm. acquiring property for residing in. So for me to combine you know, the best of both worlds where with the stock fell, we are able to raise a lot of money that I wouldn't be able to on my own. And so we then combine that with the ability to access profitable property opportunities. That was the thinking behind um, the start of Sakisuza Property Stock for to say, how can we get more people involved so that we may be able to access bigger and better opportunities? Sure. And I absolutely love the name Saki Caesar because, and in, indeed, you are you guys are building the nation. This is one of those vehicles that we can use in order to grow the property market um, with South Africans, you know, who are who are looking to do the same thing, which is build the nation. So let's talk about how you guys operate in terms of do financial institutions and banks and other um, institutions that are financial uh, uh, portfolio managers and all of those, do they recognize Stockfells and are they able to give you guys services that are uh, for your unique needs and uh, specifically to allow you guys to do what you need to do. Okay, so so Stockfields are um, an informal entity, if I can call it that. So they're not really um, a recognized entity, but they do have some certain powers in that they can enter certain transactions, right? Basically, um, the chairperson or the nominated person can then enter into certain transactions on behalf of the Stockfell. But where, um, so for example, we can and, um, purchase um, um, shares, unit trusts, and those kinds of investments. But where, where it relates to um, immovable property, like buying a house, whatever, unfortunately, as a Stockfell, we can't go and say Sakisi's where Stockfell has bought this particular property we would either need to come in as the individuals or um, um, collectively go and, and, and buy that property so it gets a bit tricky especially when you have a lot of individuals in that just the nightmare and the administration of managing and getting a, a home loan for an example as a group becomes um, almost impossible so it becomes uh, necessary then as a stock fell that you migrate and move on to a different kind of entity that will enable you to be able to access funding from the banks and traditional finances. This means that you would either need to incorporate into a company or a trust. That way you then have access uh, to, 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 to funding from, from the banks. But the challenge comes in that, you know, because, you know, the stock fell is made up of various individuals, the banks need to ultimately hold someone accountable for that, for, for that home loan. So this is where it does get a bit tricky, and that is why you find that traditionally stock fells tend to then acquire properties all for cash, because just because of the numbers involved and how that works, you know, it becomes a bit difficult to be able to access funding. But once the entity is set up, either a company or a trust, it, it then becomes easy because it is that entity that acquires that that particular house and therefore you know selling the house or any uh, um, uh, managing it becomes easy because there's an entity that is effectively managing that process and so the the, the leadership of the stock fell then becomes you know the executives or, or, the, or the people that run the company or the trust depending on how you structure it or you even can get external people that may have the skills that don't reside within your stock fell to help you to run that particular entity that you've set up Sure. And what are some of the challenges that are associated with you guys um, setting up these entities? I mean, you, as, as we mentioned before, you you guys have 300 people, 300 individuals. And, you know, in a traditional stock fell, there would be a time where everybody gathers and there's like a sharing of money. So in this case, you guys can't really do that because there's a lot of people involved. And, you know, with COVID and with all the restrictions that have been placed, how have you guys been managing um, this? Because um, there must be a level of trust, you know, when, when these things are concerned. And, and a by question to that is that on the podcast not too long ago, we had um, a co-sharing or, or a co-ownership um, series where we spoke a bit about it, uh, or episode rather, where we spoke about it. And, we, and one of the things that came out from that episode was that the most important thing is there is an agreement. So there needs to have a, a very solid agreement that's la that details what everybody's responsibilities are and the out the out clause that if somebody wants to leave, this is what happens. Um, just talk to us a bit on how the agreement specifically looks for the entity that becomes um, Sarkisi's where that now um, uh, evolves into getting these properties or acquiring these properties. How does that agreement look and how do, how do you guys also manage um, the payments in terms of um, the return on investment? Because ultimately when we invest, we want to be able to get returns, dividends okay. and um, us to be able to, to make some money. So please just talk to us about those two things. Okay. 
So the first phase is in setting up the actual stock file. So you're absolutely correct. There needs to be an agreement which you then sign or enter into or co-opt into when you join a stock file. So it will specify things like how much do we contribute, what is the frequency, what happens if you don't pay, what happens if you exit the stock file specifically, right? So the second phase is when we evolve into a trust and we operate both entities in um, in, in, in parallel, right? So the stock file is still very much there as an entity and we still have the trust as an entity. So the funds are raised within the stock file. And then once the stock file has identified a particular opportunity, those funds are then moved over into the trust. And so, how, so there's essentially two agreements here. The one is what we call the constitution, which governs the, 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 the rules of engagement, of, if you will, of the stock fall. Then we've got the trust. The trust itself has got its own set of um, ag agreement. We've got what we call a trust deed, which is a document that outlines the terms and conditions of how the trust operates, what happens, who are the beneficiaries, etc., etc. So that happens within the trust. So once the funds are in the trust and the property is purchased or whatever the case might be, then it runs like any other business in that it's got an income, it's got expenses, and then once the profits are available, they then get distributed. So how we manage all of this process is fortunately for us, you know, we live in the digital age and we are, we are fairly comfortable with technology. We use an app which we use to manage contributions, to manage payouts, to manage people who want to join and exit. All of that is managed um, on the app. We also meet virtually on Zoom at least once a month. Um, this is to cater for our members, which are all over the country. And now recently, even, um, um, you know, South Africans who are outside of the country, you know, are also coming on board and joining us. And so using technology like that enables us to, to, to stay connected and to be able to, 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 to share information. Um, and so that's how we manage the process. We also are in a WhatsApp group where we communicate all the time with those who've opted to be in the WhatsApp group. So there's just that level of communication and, and being connected um, through the, um, those various platforms that I've mentioned. Mm. You spoke about decision making being one of the biggest or, or, or a hurdle that you guys had to, you know, um, cross and probably cross all the time because there are always decisions that are being made. What are some of the other challenges that you guys have, have gone through and probably overcame or some of those challenges that you guys are still working um, to overcome because um, the, the market is volatile, you know, at, at, at different points in time, there are different things happening. The, the interest rate has been going up. There was a time it was going down. Now it's going up again. And that causes fluctuation and, uh, um, you know, movement, dy dynamics in the, in the, in the industry. What are, what are some of those things that you guys are doing in order to, to, to make sure that you, you keep the investment profitable? So we, 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 we outline our investment strategy very well in terms of what, is, what are the opportunities that we enter into. So as I said earlier that because we're a stock fund, we tend to then obviously lean to more more towards uh, acquiring properties for cash. So we're not really exposed to the volatility of the interest rates in that regard, but obviously it's got its downsides in that mm. we can leverage and whatever you. But anyway, so so that's the thing that, that, right, the challenge is that we need to wait until we have enough money to acquire an asset. We can't, for an example, just raise 100,000 rand and use that as a down payment on a million rand house. We need to raise the full million rand, which is unfortunate in that we cannot do that, um, you know, <coughs> function, you know, in the way that we are functioning at the moment but it's definitely something that we are hoping to, to overcome at some point. Right. So that's just some of the challenges in that we need to raise the money. We need to make sure that we, you know, we, 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 we find the right opportunities and we, 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 we need to make sure that they, we, we overcompensate in terms of analyzing the risk. We need mm. to make sure that, you know, for example, we look at multi-tenanted properties because we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we're finding one property that's got one tenant and that one tenant doesn't pay. We mm. always want to make sure that we, we identify our risks and we say, how do we mitigate this? And we involve the members in the decision-making process to say, guys, this is the opportunity that we've identified. These are the pros, these are the cons, these are the risks, these are the benefits. So when we are investing, we are all collectively, not only are we um, collectively raising funds, but we're also collectively learning about the property industry. So that is why one of the big benefits of belonging to a network like Sakisuzo is that you not only benefit from you know, the income that you earn or the, or, or, or the returns, but you also benefit from the collective knowledge that we, mm. that we are co under, co undertaking together. Recently, we've entering now the commercial space. So now we're having to learn about what is commercial uh, properties, whereas previously we were playing in the residential space. So mm. now we're all co-learning about how commercial, commercial properties work. So that is just one of the big benefits around, around that as well. 
Sure. And and looking into 2022, how do you where do you guys see the market going? Um, just before we, we we start rounding up our conversation tonight, where do you where do you see um the market going in terms of stock files? Do you see more stock files coming up? Do you see maybe even the financial institutions opening up their hands to or, or, or their hands to and services to you guys to say, listen, we are recognizing that you guys are doing something special in this space and they're giving you service offerings. Are you guys approaching banks, um, approaching financial institutions to say this is what we are doing and it's working? So the, the property stock for market has been um, a big um, focus, especially from the financial industry, because there's so much untapped potential there. And I think they're on, they're starting to slowly come on board now and look at what are some of the, the solutions that they can offer for property stock falls. Mm -hmm. One of the banks, for an example, is offering now a home loan solution where up to 12 people can actually go and get a home loan together. So as specifically as, as a Kisuza property stock fill, uh, uh, one bank has actually approached us to say, how can they provide home loan solutions for our members? So our members have got a dedicated banker at one of the banks and all our home loan solutions are taken care in that way. Mm. So they're slowly coming on board and saying, how can we meet you guys halfway so that we are able to to provide solutions but obviously this is still a new um, um a space and so you know obviously the banks are going to be cautious and they want to slowly come in until they understand it a lot better i know there's been a lot of research as well that has gone into the space within um, the private sector as well as in the academic spaces you know i get invited to participate a lot in this research so i know that there's a lot of research that's going in and obviously on the other side it's to find out how can they provide better solutions for us and so also my, you know, my role as a coach, um, even within the property stock files, I'm seeing a lot of stock files now, not only going into property, but also other, you know, businesses or opportunities like farming, franchising, you know, um, uh, hospitality. So they're now thinking beyond just, you know, um, the traditional stock files that we know, which are just uh, grocery stock files or funeral stock files, and now going into actually investment focused uh, stock files that are actually going gen to generate an income for the members. Mm. I think definitely if you, if the objective objective is clear the model works if the objective is clear and there's uh, good intentions with the people who run it then it definitely can be profitable and can work i mean it's worked for generations and that's the reason why um, a lot of people are not deciding to evolve it and bring bring it into the property space and into the different spaces mm -hmm. that we see ourselves um having having these days where we can take advantage of so someone is sitting at home tonight who's a property investor who who wants to go into a property stock fell or wants to start one you know someone wants to come into the market and um be in a property stock fell what is your your advice what what are the steps that they need to take tonight as they're watching us what can they do you know actionable intelligence for them to be able to do from tonight in order to either start one or join one i think you mentioned the key point that you said that you know if the if the intentions and objectives are clear Mm. So in order to be clear on what it is that you want, you need to have the right knowledge because sure. a lot of people go in and just say property, but they don't even understand, especially if you're looking at it with the investment focus. So you need to understand that now you are an investment stock for, and you need to make sure that when you are buying a property, it is an investment grade property. Never mind the fact that you're buying it cash, but it's still, the fundamentals still need to be there. It still needs to make sound financial um, sense for you to be able to invest in it. So that comes with having the right level of knowledge. So the knowledge would be the first thing that you would need to get. You would need to understand um, if you are deciding that property is the asset class that you as a stockfall want to inv invest in, get yourself a property coach. You know, I provide coaching services around, you know, making sure that you, you are making the right investment decisions. You are right buying the right properties that are right for your particular group and your stockfall. And you need to make sure that, you know, the, your stockfall is solid. It runs, um, smoothly it's got all the things that are in place that need to make sure that it runs accordingly like a constitution like a contribution management system all of those things need to be in place before you can run a stock for because otherwise then you may just run into trouble sure no thank you so much for that and i'm sure that um a lot of people sitting and watching us right now are already convinced that where do i sign up i need to start today um any last word of advice in terms of how you can make it profitable how you can make it work and to to all categories of players in the property industry so understand what you're getting yourself into you know and especially if you're joining like a public stock firm, 
um, where it's people that don't know each other. You know, mm. you need to just do your research and due, due, due diligence so that you don't end up, you know, losing your hard-earned money. So mm. definitely, you know, do your right res research. And I mean, property, property um, can be very profitable when done right. So make sure that, you know, you surround yourself with the right people and you surround yourself with the right knowledge so that you may be able to um, realize your, your, your investment objectives. No, definitely. Um, and if anybody has questions and uh, um, things that they would like to ask or, or want to get in contact with you, where can they, where can they contact you? Um, they can contact me on my, on my email, hello at meetcelindile.com. That's hello with H-E-L-L-O at meetcelindile.com. Otherwise, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as Celindile Lisiane, as well as Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I'm really encouraged. I'm, I'm inspired and motivated already to, you know, to look for a stock file to join because, wow, <laughs> I, uh, the way you, you've given us information and those examples, really, really appreciate you coming through tonight and really giving us that knowledge. We really appreciate it and have an absolutely beautiful night. Thank you so much. And that is how we wrap up the show tonight. So the stock fell works, guys. It is not a flat by night and it will definitely, if done right, if with the right intentions and obje clear objectives, it will definitely be profitable. So if you're a property investor, if you're someone who wants to get into the property market, this may just be a way for you to explore to ensure that you can start that property portfolio or increase it. Till the next time we see you right here on the Private Property Podcast every, every weekday, 7 p.m. My name is Dumi. Have an absolutely beautiful night.